So good afternoon and welcome to the special public meeting of the Halton District School Board for Friday, June, June 29, 2018. I'd like to welcome everyone and remind everyone that this meeting is video voice recorded and live streamed from the hdsb.ca website. I would also like everybody to turn their devices off. I'm turning my way down. Okay. And uh, to start this meeting, so we have a number of people that are in various locations, uh, hundreds of kilometers from us to right in the room. So we're going to do a bit of a roll call. So um, I see Vice Chair Al Harrison right here. Uh, Donna Danielli. I'm here. She's here. Kim Graves. Kim Graves. That sounds like. How do you mute star six? I think. Kim. Okay, we'll come back to Kim. Jean Gray. Can everybody please mute their phone? There you go. Kim, are you there? Yes, thank you. Okay, Jean Gray. Yes, I'm here. Great. Amy Collard? Yes, I'm here. Rochelle Pappin's in the room. Leah Reynolds? I'm here. Great. Kelly Amos is in the room. Anne Harvey Hope? Yeah, I'm here. I'm having trouble logging in, but I think I've got it now. Okay, great. Joanna Oliver's in the room. So, Manager Gortmaker, you have that? I do. Thank you. Okay, great. Okay, so we have uh, Executive Officer McFadden in the room, as well as Superintendent Veerman and Superintendent Pachetti. Uh, and welcome people in the gallery. We also have some um, people that will be joining us at the desk in a few minutes. So, uh, before we start, we're going to honor the land. So Halton, as we know it today, is rich in history and modern traditions of many First Nations in the Métis. From, from the Anishinaabe to the Atawaran, the Haudenosaunee, and the Métis, these lands surrounding the Great Lakes are steeped in Indigenous history. As we gather today on these treaty lands, we have the responsibility to honour and respect the four directions, land, waters, plants, animals, ancestors that walked before us, and all the wonderful elements of creation that exist. We'd, we would like to acknowledge and thank the Mississaugas of the New Credit First Nation for sharing their traditional territory with us. Okay, next we are up to the agenda. So I'm assuming everybody has seen the agenda. Are there any questions about the agenda? Hearing nothing. So uh, I guess we're going to call all those in favor. Oh, sorry. Moved by Trustee Amos, seconded by Trustee Pappin. And all in favor, just I'll do a roll call for the people who are online of approving the agenda. Of approving the agenda. Okay, so uh, um, that are seven that are logged in the system. So, hmm. <laughs> sorry, I have to write down everybody that's online. So, Anne, what's your vote? Okay. Okay. So, don't need Anne. We need Leah. Yes, I'm in favor. Amy? Yes. Jean? Jean? Kim? Sorry, yes, that one. And Kim? Yes. Okay, that passes unanimously. Thank you very much.
Okay, are there any declarations of possible conflict of interest? <coughs> Seeing none in the room, Amy, do you have any conflict of interest? No. Kim? No. Jean? No. Leah? No. Excellent. Okay. We are now up to our ratification action items, and we have one item as part of this special board meeting. A 2.1.1 Education Development Charge Bylaws, uh, Report 18095 on page 90, oops, sorry, in your board, uh, that was uh, circulated and in your board package. Uh, welcome uh, Brad Teichman and Jack Amandel Amandolia and uh, Superintendent Veerman. And Director Miller is going to speak now. Thank you, Chair Gravens, and uh, um, b both uh, Mr. Amendola and uh, Mr. Teichman may have a few words after I speak. I just want to thank the trustees for bringing this together. Uh, as everybody in this room is aware and the, and the public is aware, uh, thanks to a, um, information disseminated by the Board of Trustees, that we followed the process through the EDC to amend our bylaw uh, for this year. Uh, for the remain for the uh, the next five year bylaw, um, and we sought an increase. Uh, it goes to the ministry for approval, then it comes back to to the board for approval of the bylaw after the ministry has given approval to the background study. Uh, there were some uh, due to the provincial election. There was some challenges this year, and as a result, it was not approved. Uh, our previous bylaw expired on June twenty fourth. And uh, once it expired, we were unable to collect uh, education development charges or EDCs, and the board was short $127,000 per day approximately. So at the end of five days, we have not collected EDCs, and that's about $635,000 that the Halton District School Board has not been able to collect. And even um, if this is approved today. We have to wait for another five days before it can be implemented. So roughly the board will lose about $1.2 million uh, compared to what we were bringing in as a new EDC bylaw asking for an increase in those charges. And we are uh, uh, have an extension agreement that will allow us to continue on with the current EDC bylaw, but it does not reflect the actual market value of land at this point. So I just wanted to make those comments, and then I'll turn it over to our guests and uh, Superintendent Veerman. Um, thanks to Director Miller, and thanks to the trustees uh, for having us here today. I know you've probably been... Can you hold on a second? There's a point of clarification. Sure. would just like to have it clarified. It's not that the ministry did not approve them. Uh, it's that they they have not made a decision yet, correct? Sure. Um, yeah, so the, the background study, the 2018 background study has now been approved. So just to, to summarize, so, the two, so previous to today, uh, the last condition that we had to meet was getting approval of the assumptions contained in the 2018 background study. And as Director Miller, we didn't obtain those approvals because of the provincial election. So we have worked with the ministry over the last week. They have agreed and we have a, their approval letter of the 2018 background study. The, the approval, however, and this is what we were asking the trustees to vote on today, is contingent upon the new bylaw being, so it's, it's not necessarily an extension of the old bylaw, it's a new bylaw that's, that's being, at, that the trustees are being asked to consider for passage today, but that bylaw is, will only last up to one year and will have to maintain the existing rates that have been in effect. So they're not taking the rates of the 2018 background study, but that background study has been approved. Why don't we let uh, um, the people at the front finish their ramble and before we have um, okay. questions? Thank you. Okay. 
So, so I'll be brief. That, that was really all I was going to say was just to summarize the process that we've gone through over the past couple of weeks. Um, it's, it's, I guess, not an ideal situation. As Director Miller uh, mentioned, it doesn't reflect the increases that the board needs to, to cover land over the next several years. But the way I think, um, at least as your consultant, the way I look at it, and I, I think your, your superintendent of business would agree, is that we need revenue coming in. Um, as we mentioned in the last meeting, there are debt servicing costs that have to be paid. The board is about to purchase additional sites. And again, while it's not the, the ideal situation, um, it is gonna have revenue coming in starting next Wednesday. Um, so we're, we're, we're here to answer any questions, and uh, Mr. Teichman is here to speak to any of the legal aspects of it as well. Okay, before we get started, I'm going to put the motion on the floor. I understand we do not have to waive any rules or anything. Um, so, be it resolved that a further public meeting is not necessary in regard to the education development charges by law. Be it resolved that the Halton District School Board enact education development charge by law as attached to port, report 18105 Appendix A to apply to the region of Halton. That the bylaw levy and education development charge on both residential and non residential development, and that per, the percentage of growth related net education land cost that is to be funded by charges on non residential development be 15% that the board's bylaw be in the form attached hereto with the following figures inserted. In section nine, four million, oh sorry, $4,364 as the education development charge on each dwelling unit in a residential development. In section 12, $1 and 11 cents as the education development charge per square foot of gross floor area applied to non-residential development, which is 11.95 per square meter, that the board's bylaw come into force on July 4th, 2018 and have a maximum term of up to one year. Moved by Trustee Amos, seconded by Trustee Pappen. Okay. Uh, I know that uh, Trustee Collard had a question. Um, we'll start with her. And then we have Kelly on the speakers, uh, Trustee Amos on the speakers list. Thank you. Um, just briefly, I, I'm concerned that um, we have a letter from BUILD stating that they supported our recommendation, our original recommendation for the changes to the bylaw. And now we find ourselves stuck between a rock and a hard place where we either can't collect any uh, bylaw charges or we have to take this reduced rate. So we're pretty much forced into a position of taking a loss, and it will be a loss, as in addition to the million dollars that we've already lost. And I am concerned that we have no method for um, recovering these losses. And I would like it noted that there is no mechanism in place for us to recover the monies lost. And that bill was in agreement with our recommended new bylaw. Um, I will support this, but I, I support it reluctantly because it is, um, it's a step backwards for us. Okay, thank you. Trustee Amos. Oh, hold on a second. Oh, um, um, everything Trustee Collard said is, is, re is accurate. And um, it's hard to, it, but we can't say for sure that the loss cannot be recovered. It, Jack and I are still looking at that. The potential is we can recover some of it. We don't know. Um, but definitely for the one week, 10 day period when there was no bylaw as of next week, which would be about 10 days, those people escape paying. So if we can recover it, the, that loss, it's gonna be tacked onto the shoulders of developers who come along later when the board is able to pass a new bylaw, not this bylaw, but the one that will follow this, it'll reflect market value. So that's the best we can do. But, but in response to Trustee Collard's comments, um, uh, the, we, uh, Director Miller and I, all of us were on the call 
this was what the ministry was prepared to do. So it was either collect a reduced rate or collect nothing. So this is better than nothing. This is a punch in the gut, not a punch in the face, <laughs> to use Director Miller's analogy. Okay. Uh, Trustee Amos. Thank you. I have two things. The first is um, you said Wednesday, so it's five days. It's not five business days then. Okay. Okay, thank you. Um, the other thing is um, the um, the town of Oakville, and I know they were going to ask some of our municipal counterparts to keep collecting the funds, and I don't know whether they were actually going to do that. I mean, they had passed a motion to support and to try and um, recover some of those things, and whether I don't know if they could or not. So um, that may be something we have to have discussions with because I don't know what the legalities around that piece of it were. Um, yes, we um, staff advised the area municipalities not to collect EDCs for any building permits that were issued starting Monday, four days ago. So starting the 25th, any permits issued then forward, they were advised not to collect because there was no longer a bylaw for either board. So um, oh, I, I just should just mention, sorry, it's not in response um, to your question, uh, but the trustees should know the Catholic board passed their bylaw last yesterday evening. So, same same circumstances. Thank you, uh, Vice Chair L. Harrison. Thank you very much, uh, through you, Madam Chair. Um, I will be supporting the motion that's on the table, and once the question has been called. I do have two additional motions for consideration. The first one, I'm not sure if it needs to be a motion, but it's to keep a tally of the incremental, uh, of both the incremental losses and the loss to date so that we can have some ongoing um, and accurate record of um, what those losses are. Um, and the second one is, this one I've had a bit more time to think about, but be it resolved that the Halton District School Board collaborate with the Halton Catholic District School Board and municipal partners to explore and identify the appropriate process and or mechanisms to request that the development community voluntarily remit using the current formula educational development charges during the period of time when no EDC bylaw is, was in place, including retroactively to June 24th and to such time as a new bylaw is enacted. So you're making a motion? Okay, so we will deal with this motion first. Uh, are there any more speakers from the great beyond that would like to say anything? Uh, aim, aim. Okay, Trustee Graves, can you go ahead? Thanks. Um, my, uh, one of my concerns has been with um, our, our interaction with the, the Ministry of Education uh, this week. It is that just in, in the wording, it, it kind of looks like we're asking them to use the current background study for the approval of, of this bylaw we're talking about today. Um, will this prevent us from using the same background study um, in, in the process that's currently in place or any future ones? Uh, I guess I'm, I'm concerned that it didn't specifically say only for this one year period, but but the, the wording I find was very vague. Is there anything that leads us to believe that using the background study for, for the extension of the bylaw is going to prevent us from, from using it for uh, that, that process that, that we're almost all the way through? Um, yeah, I could. Uh, there's actually two um, answers to that question. So the first is the background study itself um, is only good for, and this is this is according to legislation, can only be used for up to a one-year period to determine the charge in the board's bylaw. 
So the background study we issued, I think, now in March. So if the board um, passed a new bylaw um, before March of 2019, then the EDC background study that we used could, or that we already completed, could be used as a basis for that new bylaw. But I would add to that, that um, based on the question before and Mr. Teichman's answer, that if we were trying to recover some of the lost funds, then the board would likely do a new background study to try to incorporate those lost funds into a new EDC rate. Okay, so Trustee Oliver. Uh, thank you. Um, it's, uh, it's unfortunate that we find ourselves in this situation because all the steps that were necessary in this process um, were taken um, at the appropriate time frames. Um, but, so, but here we are. Um, I will be supporting this motion because I feel that um, this is proactive and it's better than taking a kind of a wait and see approach which I'm afraid potentially might cause more losses to us. I will be also supporting some mechanism for tracking um, any incremental losses we have incurred um, as a result of uh, the, the time lag and uh, uh, putting a, a process into play on how we can recoup some of that um, in the near future. So thank you for all your work on that. Trustee Harvey Hope. <laughs> Hold on a second. Wait a second, Ann. Ann, can you yes. hold on a second? Okay. Ann? First thing is uh, people that are in the room really need to talk into their mics. I can barely hear Jack and Brad. And then when the people that are on the phone call in, they practically burst my eardrum. So just we'll have to play with the sound a little bit. Um, so thank you very much for everybody who's done all this work. Um, and uh, I agree, I am, have the same concerns as Kim as far as the wording and the, the talk about the parameters. Um, I'm also um, uh, concerned that we already were not raising our rates uh, as, as much as the percentage increase of the fair market values of land. And as we've noticed just in the last couple of months, the fair market value of land keeps going up. So um, I agree we're also stuck between a rock and a hard place, so I'm also going to be supporting this, but to some extent under duress. Um, I also support uh, Tracy and her concept of um, further consult consultation. Um, so um, my question, I guess, is um, how much did the background study cost us and how much would it cost to get another one? Um, I'm not sure that we have the ability to really because it's, it's legal fees and things like that. So I'm not sure if that's a, appropriate for public session. Um, but perhaps you have some comments about the other parts and what you wanted to say before. Yeah, the one thing I wanted to address, um, a couple of comments have been made with regard to tracking. So that's something that um, we we through the boards have asked the municipalities to for that period that you weren't collecting EDCs to still give us the monthly reports that they provide to us so we could see how many permits were actually issued with a zero charge but we can then apply what the charge would have been to find out exactly um, the value you would have missed so from the tracking perspective that's something that's already being done by your board staff Okay, uh, according to Director Miller, um, we will be furnished with the information on how all those charges come together to come up with the f uh, what the cost of putting a, a back the background study cost. So we just don't have that information in front of us either. So Trustee Pappen. Uh, thank you through the chair to our guests. I, I just wanted to say that I will be supporting this motion. Um, I understand there's some concern about the wording and I wondered if the motion accepted by the Catholic Board last night had the same concerns about the wording of the motion. What, what, um, which aspect of the well, motion? Well, what Kim was talking about 
that she was concerned about the wording. You said that uh, they passed the motion. Did they pass exactly the same motion as we're going to pass to today? Um, the wording was slightly different, but the substance was the same. They, okay. they use a different format, but the substance was the same. Okay. Um, almost okay. identical. Okay, thank you. Trustee Amos. Thank you. Um, I noticed that it says a maximum term of up to one year. Is it possible to push so that it only goes like till September, October? Because when, by then hopefully the new ministers will be in position and we can start some type of a process to get them to actually accept what our new or proposed EDC rates were. Is that a possibility? Yeah, I think the intention um, with that wording in particular, um, emphasizing up to one year, not a one year bylaw, was with the intention that, you know, once a new minister is named, the dialogue starts to open up again and we continue um, these discussions with the ministry. Um, and, and I think the ministry, I think the ministry even themselves suggested that, you know, this is not to say that it's going to take a year, but to give them a year to start these uh, reviews and discussions. Thank you, and that's why I want, I just want to make sure it's emphasized that it's up to one year and we prefer much shorter timelines if possible. I'd also just like to make a statement. Um, uh, when we started this process, um, it was a very unfortunate situation that we found ourselves in. And I'd like to thank um, both of you very much for your continued advocacy on our behalf, because um, I know it has um, really helped and you've kept us informed and you've made sure that this has been something that's been front and center. So thank you very much for all of your hard work on this. I'd also like to thank our municipal partners because they have also stepped up and made a point of trying to support us and also the community. They have been advocating on our behalf. So I'd really like to thank everyone because I think that it takes many voices to make sure you're heard. And I think in this case, that's what's happened. So I just wanted to put that out there. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Trustee Amos. Uh, uh, I feel likewise that this has certainly uh, brought the community together and opened uh, communications with um, our municipalities, our region and uh, our MPPs. And uh, we appreciate uh, that sort of strengthened relationship. So some good has come out of this. Are there any speakers on the line that would like to, that have anything, uh, any questions at all for the debate before I call the question? Hearing none. So we're gonna go to voting. Okay, all those in favor, and I'm gonna call out the people online. So Amy. Yes. Kim. Yes, and I've asked that under duress. That was yes, under duress. <laughs> uh, Jean. Yes. And Leah. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Rochelle? <coughs> and, oops, that passes unanimously. Thank you very much. And Director Miller has a comment. Thank you, Chair Vance. I'd like to thank all the trustees. This has been a difficult and complex situation for all of us, and more importantly for the, the residents and the students that attend our schools in Halton. And uh, we want to thank the trustees for not only the work they did to get us to this point, given the, the challenges we had, but also for voting for this and the support that you've given staff throughout this. I also want to thank uh, Jack and, uh, or Mr. Ammon, Ammon, Jack and uh, <laughs> Mr. Teichman, <laughs> uh, and someone who's not here, uh, our general, ma general manager, Dominic Renzella, and Superintendent Veerman. And I want to thank the Ministry of Education for working with us to find a solution uh, to this situation, and uh, we'll move forward. And I would ask if Jack and Brad can remain for it, because I know there's another couple of motions coming up, and I may need your advice on it. Thanks. So, Vice Chair Al Harrison has brought up a, a potential motion, um, and 
do you, do you want me to do you want to read it out or would you like sure okay thank you very much so it speaks the motions is be it resolved that the Halton District School Board collaborate with the Halton Catholic District School Board and municipal partners to explore and identify the appropriate process and or mechanisms to request that the development community voluntarily remit using the current formula education development charges during the period of time where no EDC bylaw is or was in force, including retroactively to June 24th, 2018, and to such time as a new bylaw is enacted. And se seconded by Trustee Oliver. Is there any debate? Trustee Amos. Um, I'd, is it possible for you to email us the motion? Um, but, oh, when? Earlier? Do it again. Okay, I'll look at it. Um, just one of the things I wanted to ask about was um, one of, and that's why I wanted to see it. There's a part of the phrasing that I, I wanted to clarify. So just a minute. Uh, Kevin doesn't have it. Um, I can try sending it to him. Okay, so my question was using the current formula, which current formula, the one that we're just passed or the one that we were advocating for previously or the one that was in existence? So my understanding is that the one that was in existence 2017 is the one that is currently in existence again, not still, because it's not an extension, it's a new bylaw. So those two are the same. So it's the 20, it's the new one, which is also the 27, yeah, yes. Yeah. You're welcome. And I don't know if this is the best way, but maybe it's our way if we don't have other <clears throat> approaches at this time to try and recoup things. And I am interested in the strategy behind it and whether there's any conflict with other potential strategies that may be pursued. Um, I, don't, I don't think there's any conflict. Um, and in terms of other strategies, I think the only thing that's available to us right now to recoup those, those unrecoverable funds that we talked about when the no bylaw was in place is probably through ministry funding. So um, I don't think this hurts, um, and I don't think there's there's a conflict, at least in at least in my eyes, in my opinion. I have a uh, trustee Graves. Thank you, and and this is kind of a strategy question as well. But would would it be possible or? prudent even to, um, after we've done this, to, I don't know if we're able to list developers and, I mean, I don't, I don't want to shame anybody in, into, into paying them, uh, but, uh, you know, I'd like to thank the ones who do, certainly, um, is that, uh, a legal possibility or is everything private in terms of what the developers have paid? Mr. Teichman? Yeah, I, so not yet. yes. Um, I don't think there's a legal issue. Um, I think it's um, highly optimistic that these guys would cooperate, but we can, you know, boards could pursue could pursue that and make the request. Um, um, I'm not sh knowing, 
After having worked with the development industry for more than 30 years, um, uh, I, I think, frankly, it's unlikely there's going to be a, a there'll be a positive response. Although it's certainly worth asking um, uh, to 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 make the request. You know, it's funny because they, they complain about the, the developers. We all know will complain about having to pay the charges, but they're the first ones who want to know: Is there going to be a school built in their subdivision? Because they know that's one of the best marketing tools. Uh, anyways, so there's that <clears throat> hypocrisy coming from the industry, but uh, but there's no there's no legal barrier or to, to um, for the boards to work together to make that request. Uh, Superintendent Fairman. Perhaps the developers would want to make a donation to the board also. That would be very kind. And a donation can be written off too. <laughs> okay. Uh, Trustee, L, I mean, uh, Vice Chair L. Harrison. Thank you. So just final comments and I it may or may not work and I think we do things for multiple reasons as well I think just in the spirit of um, I think our communities probably expect us to take this as far as we possibly can in support of students so this is I guess that's another piece of it um, and the way the development community responds, of course, will be up to them. And um, to Superintendent uh, Veerman's point, you know, I think we can be creative in whatever mechanisms um, could potentially work because they would, it is a, a voluntary thing that we're asking for funds that we would not otherwise be able to recoup. So I look forward to hearing how my colleagues feel about this motion. So no one's on the list, so I'm, I have something to say about this. And that is the fact that the whole point of having EDCs is so that private developer funds pay for land for public schools. And so it would be a shame that we would be looking if the development uh, companies who m many have probably built in these costs already uh, would be profiting on the backs of the school board and the taxpayers. I think that would be a real shame if that's the way our society is kind of going. Um, so I, I hope that we would see a donation or a voluntary contribution of EDCs um, as, uh, as this whole process has been out of the control of the board. Um, so are there, any, are there any comments from those on the telephones at all before we vote on this motion? And, and you are? I'm afraid that I'm going to have to go. I have to leave in about two minutes. So if I disappear quietly without voting, I apologize. Okay. Thank you, Trustee Daniele. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh. Trustee oh, Reynolds. Sorry. Can you hear me okay? Now we can, yes. Okay. Um, so to the chair, my question would be, um, in this mechanism or in this motion, in the mechanism, could we incent is there any way that we could incent a developer? Um, can we offer them a, um, a tax receipt? Is there anything that we can do to allow them to make it easier to be part of this goodwill gesture? Um, I think it's really important that, I mean, this is unprecedented. We haven't had to do this before. I certainly heard the comments that, uh, you know, there's, the, this hasn't always been a, a, an area of uh, agreement with the with the uh, building community. Um, however, this is necessary. And I'm just wondering if we could put our collective heads together and come up with an uh, opportunity um, that would help them come on board to this. To, to this. Uh, 
uh, tax receipt, um, any kind of, I want to say, public awareness. Um, perhaps we can have a conversation with our municipal partners about um, what would be a, a nice way to recognize them for doing the right thing. Superintendent Veerman? Um, through the chair, certainly when uh, tax receipts are issued, it has to comply with uh, CRA. And one of the um, requirements is that there's no expectation of a benefit to the donor. But certainly, I think there are uh, different avenues we can explore to, uh, to, uh, um, to pursue this a a as a viable option in order to try and recoup as much as we can for the board and for the students. Okay, great. So seeing, oh, Trustee Gray. Go ahead, Trustee Gray. You're on, uh, Trustee. Oh, okay, thank you. Um, through the chair, I just uh, would have a question of um, sort of a philosophical thing, and that is that is, is this not a case of the developers either paying now or paying later? In other words, if they were to elect not to voluntarily contribute the fees that we would have normally expected to collect, is it not the case that later when we uh, set up um, the fees uh, the next time that our fees would have to increase because of the losses that we have had to endure? Uh. Mr. Amadolio. Yeah, I, I think the issue that you'll find coming back from the development community is that we, I guess we, we tend to talk about developers as a singular entity, and there's a bunch of them. I mean, I know there's, there's less of them that there used to be, but I guess I would look at it on the other side and say, um, if I just put in a 1,000 building permits at the reduced rate, and then on July whatever, first, let's say, um, the rate goes up and I'm a different developer who then has to pay for what the first developer didn't, I think that's where the question of, of equity would come in, not from our end, but from the development community's um, end. Okay. So, Thank you. So uh, does, do you need me to repeat the motion at all before we vote on it? Nope. Okay. So we will call, I'm calling the question. Um, all those in favor? And uh, Trustee Collard? Yes. Trustee Graves? Yes. Trustee Gray? Yes. Trustee Reynolds. Yes. Thank you. And that passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Do you need to note how many that is. Remember, we've had this issue that not the numbers that people were dropping off. So. Uh, Trustee Daniele is uh, not on that list anymore. So it's. We're now 10, we're now 10 and it's noted in the minutes. Okay, so uh, we need to, another motion though so that the director continues his work um, with regards to uh, advocating um, with the new minister that was just announced today, but I forget her name. I don't say that yet. I don't know. Okay. Uh, so I have a motion uh, myself uh, to um, be resolved that uh, we that the chair that the board direct the director to continue to work with the Ministry of Education and the newly appointed Minister of Education to move the EDC levels within our bylaw to the levels proposed in the March 2018 EDC background study that was submitted to the ministry on March 13th, 2018, by the end by. Uh, the end of October, is that? Um, can I comment? Of course you can. I, I have two suggestions for this um, motion. One is give us a timeline and I would like uh, um, Jack and Brad's input into what looks like a reasonable timeline for the ministry to the 
new minister and the ministry to get up to speed. The other one is I would suggest that we work in concert with the Halt Catholic District School Board uh, around this motion as well. I've passed the gavel to um, Vice Chair L. Harrison. Um, when I spoke to the Director of Capital Services, um, they said timelines, well, this was with regard to earlier conversations with regard to approvals, but basically um, with the minister being named today, um, Capital Services said that minister will need to be debriefed on the issues. I'm not exactly sure how long that's going to take or what the level of importance um, of this issue is on, on the new minister's schedule. Um, I could comment that not formally but informally at the Catholic Board meeting last night, um, I think we were, we were kind of saying let's give it the summer um, and in September let's, let's sort of give a more renewed effort again. Not, that, not saying that the summer was, you know, let's just all go to sleep now and, and wake up again in September, but um, really give another renewed effort in September with the goal of, you know, trying to get some answer from the ministry by then and then a new plan of action for the for the board. So I think um, it would be reasonable that September, October timeframe would be fairly reasonable, I think. I think that's... No, I, I agree. That, that makes sense. sense. Is there a seconder for that motion? Uh Actually, do you want to clarify first in terms of timeline and the collaboration? Are you, those were suggested? Yeah. So adding in, so direct the director con to continue to work with the Halton Catholic District School Board and the Ministry of Education, and the newly appointed Minister of Education to move the EDC time, EDC levels within our bylaw to the levels proposed in the March 2018 EDC background study that was submitted to the ministry on March. 13th, 2018, to be completed, not completed, with a report to return to the board uh, by, the, by, the end of October. by the end of October. So October 30, by October 31st, 2018. Is there a seconder for that? Oh my goodness. Trustee Oliver. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now look to the speaker's list and Trustee Harvey Hope. Um, thank you. Um, I think this is a great idea. I am really worried that October, we only have however many board meetings in November. So uh, if it's at least any possible <coughs> to get it into the realm before the election, that would be good because um, we're going to have a, a whole lot of people trying to get up to speed. Um, but yeah, I'm all for it. This is great. We got to keep keep at it. And uh, um, sorry, Stuart, I, I hope you, you you wanted to break this summer, but <laughs> anyway. Um, but yeah, that's just the timing that the, the last board meeting in October would be preferable to the first one in November in case um, we need time to pass anything. Thank you. Through you, Chair uh, Drabens, to Trustee Harvey Hope. Uh, I agree with you. So if we were to change, our intent would be earlier than the end of October. So if we change the wording slightly to uh, at the end of October by the latest, would that be helpful? Really useful to be in that last board meeting in October. I would be good for no later than the, uh, October 31st. Does everybody understand the motion that I've? Hello, can I go up and speak with you? Sure, uh, Trustee Gray. You're up. Yes, hi. I just uh, I just wonder uh, through this through the chair if I could uh, I, I wonder maybe it's my naivety but why couldn't we make that motion state uh, instead of the time frame as suggested in the, around October why wouldn't we make it um, state at the earliest opportunity we are in fact losing money every day uh, because we are not getting what we believe to be uh, the EDC rate that, that we really require, 
in order to purchase land. So I, I think our, our campaign should continue uh, in that whereas we, you know, we have the ability now that we have a bylaw being passed, but we're still using rates that don't compensate or help us to achieve the goals that we have with regards to um, the purchase of land. And so that being the case, it just seems an awfully generous long amount of time when every day we're losing money. Through your chair events to Trustee Gray, our intention is uh, is to come back at this in September, but um, as soon as we can. The, the minister was sworn in today. I suspect that uh, the minister, the new minister of education, which I will mention in the director's report, needs a, a wee bit of time to get up to speed on uh, on you know a plethora of issues. Um, our intention is to come back, and we will have discussions with the Halton Catholic District School Board in probably September, but they also will have a new director at that time, and their new director may have to get up to speed a wee bit as well. So it, it is our intention to do it at our, at our earliest opportunity, but um, we believe that it's better to have a uh, like a final date that it should be done by. So our intent is what is 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 exactly what you've said, but the reality is the conversations with the ministry, the conversations with the Catholic board, would all take um, I don't know about some time, but take time. So I don't know if Jack or Brad have any comments on that either. No. Okay. So are there any other questions or comments from people on the telephone? Uh, there's yes, no uh, Amy, please. Okay, Amy, you're up. Uh, Trustee Collard and then Trustee Graves. Uh, yes, I'm concerned that um, if, if these things go too late into the fall, that we will be amidst our own election. And um, when, if it goes too late, we may be actually in the position of being in uh, a lame duck board. And, and so I would hope that that's a consideration in the time frame because we can't afford to be waiting to make this happen. Uh, it, it's just something I want to raise a red flag on um, because timing, the timing around this has already been messed up by one election. Let's not let it get messed up by another one. Thank you. Through you, Chair Grevance, to Trustee Collard. Uh, yeah, I, I'm fully cognizant of that, as are Jack and Brad and, and uh, General Manager Renzella. So we are fully aware of that and would attempt to do that. My concern is if we move that date before the date we've given and we get into early September and we hear from the ministry that the minister is not yet up to speed or that the Halton Catholic director is not yet up to speed, we're then... I think we might be snookered a wee bit in carrying it on. I think uh, I understand the dilemma that the trustees would be faced with, and it's our hope that we do it as quickly as we can, but I don't want to put too early a date on it in case that uh, precludes us from going beyond that early date. Trustee Graves, you're up. Thank you. Yes, I was going to express the same concerns as, uh, as Trustee Collard and Trustee Harvey Hope, and that after uh, after Election Day and in, in late October, we're effectively a lame duck board, and, and I'm not sure we can. Uh, would this be considered routine business, and would we be able to pass it during that period before December 1st? Um, and, and also, as, uh, as my colleagues have stated, with, with the, the amount of losses, and, and given this is a this is a loss from the system, mm -hmm. um, I, I would hope that this would be front and center on the Ministry of, of Education or, or the Minister's uh, agenda, because this, this is money that is being kept in the, in the hands of private developers in, instead of in the, uh, in the system. Uh, so personally, I'm expecting that, that the new minister is, is going to get on board very quickly on this, and that um, I'd like to see that date 
by the end of September, honestly. Uh, but certainly before before the election, I think if we're going to vote uh, on that, I, I think it needs to be before the election. Thank you. Uh, Chair Grabenz. So I know that our staff is very motivated to get the EDC levels back up to where they should be, uh, according to our study in March. So I'm, I'm actually comfortable with leaving that date because it's any time before that, and that leaves um, the space necessary for them to not worry about getting a report and then having nothing to report and then us going you know back through this again uh, when we leave enough cushion if they can if the staff can get it done by September 15th hey that's great <laughs> but if that's not um, we, we would we would take a report earlier than uh, than the end of October Chair Grabenz, to all trustees, that's absolutely correct. We are motivated to get this done because uh, we understand the consequences of this uh, deficit that's being collect that is not being collected, or gap that is not being collected in EDCs. My my concern is if you move the date too early, as I've said, and we do not get a necessarily positive response from the ministry or at or or they say we're not ready to talk about it or our our co-terminus board says we're not ready to talk about it by the by an earlier date then we as a uh, staff are in a bit of a difficult spot because do we then continue to pursue those conversations beyond the early date or do we come back to the board and ask for a new motion um, so this this motion provides us some time in case any of those scenarios crop up. But you do have my assurance, and I'm looking at Jack and Brad, that our intent is to get on this as quickly as possible in the new school year. Okay. Um, there are no other speakers on the virtual list here. Uh, anybody else on the phone at this moment? If not, we'll be moving to voting. Okay. Uh, yes, I just would like to ask a question. It's Jean. Okay, go ahead, Trustee Gray, you're up. Yes, uh, th th this question would be, um, I guess, of, of the Board of Trustees. Would we can we have uh, just completed a, a little bit of a. a a campaign where we have been in touch with uh, different political groups uh, in our municipal partners and so on and so forth to help us to get awareness of the loss of revenue uh, to the board. Would we be continuing that campaign while we, um, though we would have a, a, a bylaw change, it's still not what we want, and we're still losing money. So would we continue that campaign through the summer and into the fall until we get to the point where the um, new rates are established and, um, and approved? Mm -hmm. That's true. Okay, thank you. Uh, and so is there a response? From anyone, I think it goes back to what you're asking really is a strategic question. What's going to benefit the board more? Is it continuing ahead with the campaign and so on? Or is it, um, I guess, letting the staff work behind the scenes to keep us up to date and continue to push in that regard? So I look for uh, Director Miller's comment on comment on this or whether you folks at the on the hot seats over there have anything any thoughts on and, and this make, make no mistake it's all about how can we help right my uh, through you uh, vice Tra chair l harrison um my um my advice at this point was uh, I think the campaign that the trustees undertook was highly successful and we're, we're grateful for it for sure as a staff. Again, the people of Halton should be grateful for it and I'm sure they are, in particular our kids who will benefit from the new 
new properties that we're able to buy and build new schools on there. But my advice at this point is I would suggest that it, the campaign go into abeyance until we have the opportunity to work with staff at the ministry level and the Ministry of Education. My concern would be that by continuing to campaign prior to a minister becoming uh, up to speed, so to speak, with the issues, um, it, it might be um, it might be perceived differently than we would hope that it would be. So I, that would be my advice anyway. And however, you know, we'll see where our conversations go in the fall, and then the trustees can decide at that point what they think they should do. And of course, that would be my advice. The will of the board of trustees is the will, and and uh, of course, it's been fantastic what you've done so far in getting this back on the table for us. So thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. So seeing no other questions, I think, um, let's call the vote. And so those who are here can vote. And then I'll just call uh, uh, Trustee Collard. Yes. Trustee Graves? Yes. Trustee Gray? Yes. Trustee Reynolds? In support. Thank you very much. And that passes uh, unanimously with... 10, 10 out of 10. Hey, we're a 10. So good. Uh, and back to you, Chair Gerbetz. Okay, thank you. Um, does anybody have any other motions related to EDCs? That's the only thing we can talk about during the special board meeting. I, I have one that uh, perhaps is related. Okay, Trustee Graves. So people want to say perhaps that this is a more a kind of general, but it, um, I think it would make inroads in establishing a relationship with the new minister that, that would help us on this and, and future issues. Um, but I, I wonder if uh, we might entertain a, a motion for the chair to write a letter now that we know who the minister of education is. Uh, if, if uh, the, the chair might like to write a letter uh, welcoming the, uh, the new minister of education to the role um, and, uh, and and put Holton on the map, so to speak. Unfortunately, unless we tie that into EDCs, we actually can't make that motion. Yeah, I mean... Uh, Originally, it would have been to to write a letter uh, to for the chair to to highlight this with the minister. But after after listening to to our director, um, yeah, I agree. I think if if uh, we push too hard too early, um, Trustee Graves, as a, just a point of order, I can actually on behalf of the board, write a welcoming letter anyways. I would, as we have a new minister, and that's kind of- You don't need a motion vacation. for that. Perfect. Don't need a thank motion. You. Okay, thank you. Trustee Harvey Hope. Uh, I think that you just answered my thing. I'm pretty sure you can say congratulations without a board motion, so thank you. Okay, wonderful. So I don't believe we have any more motions left, uh, unless someone speaks up right now. And so next we have uh, so communicate. Trustee Gray, could I have one last? Uh, okay, Trustee Gray. Go ahead. Yeah. My, so uh, my question would be um, to the chair, to the perhaps to the director. Um, is there a, a way that uh, we can sequence the work around the EDCs? so that we are away from that our sequencing of work and, and what comes to the table is away from what would be typically um, the months that an election uh, at the provincial level could, could occur. I, I realize that the elections can, can change. They're not always in June. <laughs> I just wondered if that was possible, that we could change our sequencing of work. Director Miller? Through you, Chair Gravens, to Trustee Gray, yes, we can. Um, 
And in fact, we've had those conversations that we need to be a little more cognizant of when provincial elections are. We can, the, we can bring an, um, uh, um, a request for amended bylaws at any time within the five years of the five-year term. So it is one of the things that we are going to look at around provincial elections and so on. And I'm going to let Jack add to that. So we are off that cycle now because the provincial elections are every four years and the bylaw renewals every five years. So it only happened this time um, because the bylaw, the last bylaw was 13 and five years we ended up 18 and, and ran into the provincial election. But next bylaw will be a five-year renewal, hopefully. Um, so we should be off that uh, provincial cycle, at least for the next few elections. Okay, thank you. Okay, now we're up to communications to the board. I have none. Uh, and then we're on to the director's report. Just one quick report. I would like to, on behalf of the Halton District School Board senior team, congratulate the new Minister of Education, Lisa Thompson. She is an MPP from here on, and she has been a critic in the energy sector and um, um, green energies, etc., for the Conservative Party or in the opposition. So, congratulations, Ms. Th Minister Thompson. Um, we look forward to working with you. That's. Wait, one more thing, just one more. Uh, I have uh, three information items for private uh, that are private in the director's report. They don't require motions, they're just information items. So uh, if we can go to uh, that, that would be great. Trustee Amos has a motion to go into, no? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Um, the, um, there has been a, a social, an assistant, parla uh, parliamentary assistant to the Ministry of Education, and that is Sam Oosterhoff. I think he's from the Niagara region. There has been an assistant parliamentary assist, uh, a parliamentary assistant to the miniature, Minister of Education. His name's Sam Oosterhoff. Okay, um, uh, also to uh, Director Miller's uh, point, I uh, would like to also um, congratulate Minister Thompson on her new appointment. Thank you very much. And I'd like to also, as uh, Mr. Amadalia and Mr. Teichman are leaving, thank you very much for all your help during this time. Okay, so now uh, we need a motion to go into private session. Trustee. Amos, seconded by Trustee Pappin. So um, we'll vote on going into private. Okay, and uh, Trustee Collard, going into private? Yes. Yeah. Trustee Graves? Yes. Yeah. Trustee Gray? Yes. Yeah. Trustee Reynolds? Thank you very much. That passes unanimously. Uh, <laughs> that passes unanimously. Thank you very much. Kevin, you have us in private session now. And will you be you'll be returning after?
Yeah, Kim. Oh, yeah. Okay, so. Okay. So, uh, communications from the chair. Um, I, I've i already made my comments and communications, so I don't think there's anything uh, other than I hope everybody has a great summer and we're going to miss you, Kim, and that the appointment process has begun. The uh, press release is out. The form is on the website. You can get promoting it. I've already promoted it out on Facebook. Um, so please get the word out. We do need applicants for the Milton trustee position. And uh, otherwise, uh, do we have any questions or comments? And I hope people keep it short. <laughs> Seeing none. Okay. Um, may I have a motion to adjourn? Trustee Gray. Yeah, <laughs> and Trustee Graves to second it? I'll second, yeah. Excellent. So all those in favor. Okay. Trustee Collard. Yes. Trustee Graves. <laughs> <laughs> Trustee Gray. Funny, so was I. Uh-huh. Trustee Reynolds. Yes. That was yes from Gray. Okay, great. And that was a yes from you, Graves? Yes, it was. Okay, great. So that passes unanimously. School's out for the summer. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, Thanks Kevin. Kevin. Thank you, Kevin. And, Kev, we don't see you next year, right? All the best, buddy, in your program. Kevin's going off to school. We're Mike looking forward to you coming back and doing even better things for us. So, Thank you, and goodbye. Goodbye. Go for a swim, Jean. Yeah, just jump off that dock that you're probably sitting on. <laughs>